welcome to Adobe Live. Today we're going to be on Behance and YouTube. Hi, everybody. What's up? I see everybody in the Behance chat is here. Oh my gosh, we've got so many friends. We've got Bruce and Sean and Wade. What's up, Club Wade? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so many friends. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, Kendall. Hi, RB. How is everybody doing? Even oh, Christy Sanderson. What are you doing in the chat? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm Anna Davis Court. In. I'm hosting today the amazing Christy Sanderson. Woo! <laughs> Who's sneaky, <laughs> super sneaky. Super sneaky, always. Yes. And Christy is a well known personality here on Behance. So uh, a lot of you are already familiar. I believe Ariana was saying that she's very excited to see you here, uh, Christy. So woohoo, we've already got some fans. Uh, just to let you guys know, there is no creative challenge this week, but instead we're going to join the creative boot camp. So get on those boots and we're going to join Alex Lazarus, who is leading a graphic design and branding boot camp. So check in after the stream for that uh, right here on Behance. And I believe on YouTube, which, uh, by the way, there is a new Adobe Live channel on YouTube. So hit subscribe, be excited because we've got a whole heckin lot of content over here. And Christy, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we want to follow you in a web comic journey today. Uh, so can you just real quick tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Sure. I am um, a kind of a, I've got a lot of hats that I wear. I'm a uh, graphic designer, illustrator, artist. Um, I'm also a small business owner. Um, I do primarily comics and artwork product design for my small business, which is Be Cute. And like an example of that would be my little floof right here. Floof. And um, so yeah, this cute. is a, yeah, he's, he was so, I was so happy with how he turned out. Um, but I did all of the design and art for this in Illustrator. So I'm kind of, that's, that's my tool that I do everything in, including all my comics. And at the comic wise, I do those, um, the individual pages in Illustrator. And then I take those out into InDesign to compile them into a book, um, every year. So, um, that's a little bit of that workflow. But, um, I also do freelance on the side. Um, I've been going to conventions. Um, as kind of like a physical sales uh, uh, venue for since like 2006. Yeah, we were just talking designs. about that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's it's changed a lot over the years, but um, I used to do like 15 a year, and so that was that 15? was a thing. Yeah, it was it was um, the 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 most uh, the busiest weekend. Well, it was a week I had. I went literally from Boston to Seattle to cover anime Boston and Sakura Con. And it was like Boston to Texas to pick up more stuff than back up to Seattle. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was, that was a doozy, but, um, but yeah, no, it was a lot of fun going to all of those different ones. So, but yeah, that's a little bit about me. Um, that's pretty much all I do is I, I love <laughs> Just animation. Five million yeah. things, you know, yeah, I know. <laughs> no biggie. <laughs> I've got my notion over here that I can hopefully keep organized, but yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Notion is, seems to be a very popular tool to keep like brain organized. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right it, and I, I recently, I was like, I've gone through several things. I went from, through Todoist. I was using Google Calendar and I was using a physical planner and nothing seemed to click, but Notion seems to be clicking. So I'm, I'm hey, happy with that. Love to see it. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about what you're going to be working on today? Yes, absolutely. So this awesome. is a comic um, for, this is actually going to be tomorrow's post. And um, the focus of this one is, um, recognizing special moments and acting on them because you know sometimes in life you come upon things and you're like oh I could do this and you like say nah and then sometimes you do and they they turn into great memories so in um, this comic I have uh, my character Granny Bear and Lady Boop they're shopping for um, produce and they meet another character and they you know start talking they notice a uh, tea um, cafe right here. And then they decide to sit down and talk together and then they part, but it becomes this beautiful memory because they spent time with each other and that built their relationship. So um, I have on this one, I sometimes do uh, like um, comedy ones, farcical ones, um, slapstick, you know, mostly with the flutes, because those are really fun to do like that. But sometimes I do 
um, slice of life ones with um, like these with a little bit of narration over the top. And in, in those cases, I usually have it written out um, like very poorly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, Shh. And yeah, scratch this out. And, um, but yeah, so I usually either write that down actually in Illustrator or I do it in a book on the side and then I bring that in. And uh, but as far as all the sketching goes, I start out with these rough sketches in here and then I go from there and do my line art over the top and then do coloring. I kind of do it in batches usually, but today I'm going to take it frame by frame so you can see every step of the process. Love um, it. Thank you but- so much for showing us. But yeah, no, that's, um, and these guys I've developed, um, I think the oldest character is Momochi and I came out with her in, I think, 2006. So they've developed and changed over the years, how I've drawn them and, um, especially their personalities, uh, the cat characters and, um, the dog characters are based off of pets that I've had or have in real life. And I have some more whimsical ones like granny bear and the ladybug, lady boop and happy mm-hmm. paper, um, that have kind of developed through the comics themselves and, um, the daily paintings, um, that I do. Absolutely. So. Which you can catch on Christie's Behance channel, by the way. Uh, you have many, many live streams where you've been working on these comics and these characters and just really building out their world, which is adorable. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a lot of fun. It, it kind of, you know, I, I've been working on some, because I want to do some, like, not classes, but kind of tutorial type things. And I'm trying to tackle some of the different questions, like, how do you how do you build a world? How do you build characters? How do you build up these stories? And um, I whoops, that I was making. Uh, <laughs> I was making my uh, my go live notice. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're perfect. It's just and, funny. It's like oh, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, it's like that's me. Yeah, no. Um, but yeah, so I'm I'm thinking about that and like a lot of these guys. I developed over those daily paintings when what I was trying to do there was just build my skills. And Mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, I need to do something I really enjoy. So I'll like, I'll study a screen cap in an animated movie or a TV show or a, you know, a regular movie. I'll be studying the composition and how the, you know, the, the story is playing out and how they're telling a story frame by frame. And it's kind of hard to put that into words and and describe how over the years these pieces have just kind of stacked up and, absolutely yeah but you're regularly putting them out <laughs> yeah it's just it's fun though I mean and it's you know because like one example that's really different is um happy paper which is uh don't think yeah you can no you can't really see him he's a giant toilet paper roll and <laughs> That Duh. character, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> that character developed um, when I cosplayed him at conventions. So, yeah, no, I have a, a giant toilet paper costume. It's made of uh, four uh, pool inner tubes with a, um, it's like a felt kind of like it's an outer Outer casing, but it has a, yeah, it has elastic at the top, elastic at the bottom. So it holds the tube in place. I've got holes for my arms and toilet paper arms that I wear. And video, I need to see this. (laughs) Um, I can actually, I've got one of me riding a, um, a mechanical bull in the tappy paper costume. (laughs) And that was tough. (laughs) Because I'm top heavy. Yeah. And, and I, the only thing you can hold on to is that little spur. And so you can see me start sliding just, you know, just (laughs) off the bowl, just very slowly. (laughs) Toilet paper overboard. (laughs) Yeah. And, um, but yeah, no, so that personality developed it um, through interacting with people because when I got into the costume, I, it's really weird to describe it, but I couldn't talk because I could only say like a few words because happy paper only says a few words. Cause so I wanted him to uh, appeal to everyone regardless of language. So he, he's only excited to see you. He says, hello, he says, bye. And that's really kind of it. He's just kind of reactionary and happy and joyful. And so that's awesome. 
<laughs> but yeah, that uh, was unexpected, but really fun. Um, and, I uh, love that story. Uh, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> By the way, I just want to call out real quick that you've got some diehard fans in the uh, chat. Oh. <laughs> MD Nazam was saying, I am literally a diehard fan of Sanderson oh. and Sarah Mapes. And also Sanderson's teaching ability is just outstanding. <laughs> hey, I'm so happy to hear that. So I love I it. Just, you never, I mean, I just like, you know, I, I hold teachers in such high regard and I'm just like, I don't know if I could ever do that. And I just, you know, try my best when, when answering questions and, and describing stuff. So I'm always happy to hear, and I'm always happy to get feedback from teachers on the comics. Cause I've gotten a few that use the comics. They, um, as a teaching tool, um, like for language, and they'll they'll take out the text and they'll they'll teach by having the students put in their own uh, um, uh, speech bubbles, and mm-hmm. it's it's so exciting to see that and do that. So, do you ever create <laughs> prompts like that, or it's like a fill in the blank kind of thing? I haven't yet, but I mean, so far it's just been um, uh, teachers uh, on their own just taking the comics and. Um, uh, getting them ready for their classes. And I think they just scrubbed the things in Photoshop, but um, I <laughs> definitely could do that and, uh, and provide a, a teacher pack. Um, it's one of the many on the list of it's, things. I know, right. The never ending list of things. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's uh, it goes longer and longer, like, you know, doing coloring books and and all that good stuff. And you're like, of course I can do that. How, how, you know, how long could that possibly take? And yeah, it takes forever. (laughs) Always longer than you expect. (laughs) Absolutely. It really does. Uh, By the way, MD was asking what brush you're using. Uh, And we Uh, also had a comment that said probably the blob brush. uh, Yes, that is correct. (laughs) That is my tool of choice. My my weapon for uh, line art is the blob brush. And let me show you my um, settings here real quick. So this is uh, my general ones. Um, I have the smoothing in the middle um, because I kind of like it just a, just a touch of editing on there. And um, I keep the uh, point size equal uh, to the vari- variation with pressure sensitivity on. And that gives me a nice line variance that that feels good. Um, and I can get, you know, a lot of detail without having to change my brush a lot. Um, these guys right here, it's really to your taste. I was messing around with my settings and I kind of just liked the um a little bit of an angle on the tip and the the slight pinch on it that gave me a nice shape that I can work with and but if you edit these you can in effect like make a chisel tip brush for lettering you can do a lot of different stuff that's that's really fun nice. um, but those are my my general settings there and another thing that's pretty important for me are these two guys right here um, I have keep selected deselected and merge only with <laughs> selection yeah checked and <laughs> it um that allows me to create a lot of strokes in quick succession, but they're all individual objects. So if there's one that I happen to not like, I don't have to erase half of them to get back to it um, and just undo it or erase the whole thing and do it again. I can just go and select the one I want and then redraw. And um, that that's really valuable to me um, when I'm working on line art like this. And, uh, but um but yeah, that's really it. I use the uh, the bracket tools to um, punch my brush up and down. And mm-hmm. um, a lot of the other stuff I've got, my hand always on the keyboard. Um, I'll be using the alt key, the control key, um, and the shift key, and the space bar, of course, to move this around mm-hmm. um, pretty frequently. Um, and I think that is learning those hotkeys and getting kind of my seat there is what um, really helped me accelerate my performance in Illustrator and how fast I make my stuff. Um, So if you are looking for ways to improve working in Illustrator, definitely spend the time to do that because it, it, it will help. Absolutely. Uh, Bruce is saying Christy's streams are are so uh, informative for Illustrator. Wink. (laughs) (laughs) thank you so much Bruce (laughs) and MD is saying I always set an alarm for her program that's so nice I love it (laughs) thank you so much 
Uh, also, I was checking out on your website. You have all your comics and you can watch or watch them. You can read them in succession from first and then onward. And then you can also see the last one that you made. I mm-hmm. loved seeing your first and last like next to each other. Because like yeah. you were saying, stacking work, you can really see your progression yeah. through that. Oh, you can. And it's just, you know, when I look back on some of my early drawings of, you know, Momo, Evil Landlord, I mean, they were very flat and boxy. And as I, you know, grew my skills, they just, they came, they got more squish, they got more life. And um, because I started thinking of, especially in Momo Cheat's case, like a sack of flour, how does a sack of flour move and flop in something that is real that I can see and imagine and kind of incorporate into the life of this character. So she's, she's got this kind of bobble head that's balanced by that heavier heavier body. And it just, you know, looking back on those and, you know, there's also a, a big departure in that those first comics were made um, with a keyboard and a mouse. And um, it would take me days to get them done. And, um, but yeah, I was using a totally different set of tools. I was building them with the shape builders here. I was using the um, pen tool a lot. And um, that um, I, I can see that rigidity in the characters. Mm-hmm. And then when I, you know, got a tablet, I can see how I, you know, changed and started to get squishier, I guess. Definitely. Uh, real quick, I want to go back to that uh, conversation, but also we have a question from Enlightened Swami who said, how do you erase? Because you just oh. erased a line and then your line like popped up perfectly again. <laughs> um, that is a function of my pen. This is a Wacom pen. It has a little eraser on the end. And so the uh, function, the eraser is uh, bound to this little tip. So all I have to do is literally flip my pen over and erase it and then redraw and it, um, it come, it, it's really, it, it's a, a vital thing for me as far as tablets go. And cause I knew that that was, that was something I needed. And so that, that kind of, that eliminated some tablets and hardwares for me that, cause they, the pens don't come with that on some of them. I think XP pen doesn't. And I think there's another one, but I was like, okay, well, I mean, you know, I need that. So that was one of the big considerations when I was looking to um, get a tablet. I knew that I needed that. So, nice. um, so yeah, you started with a mouse and then you were like, this is actually what I need. <laughs> I know that I need like an eraser. And you yeah. said you were on a Wacom tablet. Um, actually, the yeah, I'm on a, right now I'm on a Cintiq 24 Pro. And um, my first tablet was a 13 HD and um, my, uh, I love both of them. The 13 though, I used for five years and then I I realized that I was shrimping. I was kind of going over and just drawing over my tablet really hunched over and I needed to sit more upright and have a larger screen. So that's, that's what guided my upgrade there. I like your term Um, shrimping, (laughs) but no, it is. You you don't (laughs) notice it until you're like, your shoulders are tight. And I'm like, Oh, I've been drawing for hours and in the same position. So um, I get a good hunch. (laughs) Yeah. And it, yeah. So that um, that's what guided me there. And also I was concerned with, cause I have limited desk space. So I kind of have to have it uh, usable in each way. I, c- I have to have it uh, where I can move the tablet out and use my desktop and then, um, you know, move it back out when I need to draw. So that led me to trying the first one, which was smaller. I could literally just scoot it underneath my monitor riser. And then when I wanted to upgrade, I leaned on the, uh, the ergo arm where you can just slide it out of the way. Nice. And, um, but yeah, both, I would highly recommend both of those because they're really, really good. And mm-hmm. um, I've also used the uh, the iPad and um, the Illustrator app on the iPad um, has come a, a really a long way and I can duplicate my entire, actually, as soon as they, I'm not sure if they've added isolation mode yet. I know it's on the table. Um, but once they do, I can duplicate my entire process on the iPad. Um, oh, it's the last tool you need. (laughs) Yeah, that is the last tool I need. Um, because what I do here is I only have really, let me jump out here. 
I only really have two layers. So my layers kind of in the Photoshop sense are groups. So I'll have like um, here, I'll have my frame on top and then I'll have my line art in a group. And then I will drop my colors inside that line art group. And then I'll be able to move these characters and objects around if I need them. Um, and I'll have that kind of that versatility in it. And um, that's kind of how I organize everything. And um, with a few actual layers, I have something else that is in, is in effect a layer for me. Um, nice. and speaking of that, I need to group these two guys together. Got to group them. Yeah. And that's the... Because if I don't, I'll lose track of um, little bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. And I only had to, you know, go through that a few times of trying to hunt for a tiny piece that I couldn't find because it was layered beneath 20 different other things. Mm -hmm. And it was like a color that it shouldn't have been. So, <laughs> so frustrating. Yeah. I imagine you need a certain kind of brain to be able to <laughs> like yeah. keep track of all these things all at once. Yeah. It just, it, it, it really, I mean, uh, if I didn't have the grouping, I would be, I would be a lot more frustrated than I am because it just, uh, it just takes, um, it just takes a couple of errors and you are searching in for one little thing for hours and it can get really frustrating. Well, it's like uh, in Photoshop, I know a lot of people have trouble uh, keeping track of layers like oh I was painting on the wrong layer or whatever oh, yes. I feel like this is that times a few <laughs> yes <laughs> like, yeah exactly complex. yeah and it's um but I, I really like it because you know once you get used to and get it in you know your head that okay I've got a couple lines down I got to group these things and work in isolation mode it, it pretty much takes care of itself mm -hmm. um and it's just you know you got to get there before that uh that automatic um and I still forget, I still forget a lot and I'll be drawing and I'll have like a ton of stuff that won't be grouped and, and I will, anyone who's been in my chat will have heard me. I forgot to group this or I didn't group it. Or, you know. Whoops. Yeah. It's okay. Exactly. <laughs> to forget is to be human. <laughs> it, that is true. That is very true. Oh, and what did you just do? You threw like a shadow layer in there? Yeah. Yeah. I just, um, I, since this guy is, I like to keep, um, not only the characters in their own groups, I like to do my main set pieces. I kind of think of a frame, um, or a sketch as kind of like a, a movie set or a theater set where I'm placing, uh, props and, um, different items. And then my characters get placed at the end to interact with them kind of like, um, you know, like in the Looney Tunes, you've got the background and then you've got your character cell set on top. And so that's how I think about it. And I like to drop all of that into the same, um, the same group so I can keep track of all of it. And what I'm doing here is I'm just grabbing my pencil tool. And this is the same way I color. I'll take the pencil tool and I'll hit the draw behind. And so that automatically drops all of my color objects below my line art. And um, so that kind of keeps it nice and clean and easy. And Definitely. then I've got all of those objects colored and lined in one group that I can just drag and drop anywhere. So. Yeah, we had a question about how you colored. So that I think that answers that, uh, putting it behind the lines with yeah. draw behind on the pencil tool. Nice. It, um, it saves a lot of time. And it was just, it was one thing that I discovered kind of by accident. And I was like, ooh, this, because I would, I would, you know, do it in the standard mode, which puts everything on top. And then I would be changing the stack order of all these objects um, individually. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take a lot of time, you know, it, it one at a time, but you add all of this together and it really, it really adds up. For sure. And so, um, but yeah, no, that one's another little trick that I do. And um, it, it really, those little things add up to a lot of time saving. And all of this, of course, is because I'm always behind and not managing my time well. So I'm coming up on posting day and I don't have my comic done. So I've got to do it as fast as possible. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Please find the way to save the time. <laughs> um, also, Sean Cassell was asking, uh, does Illustrator have the same function of layer finding as Photoshop? So finding your layers, do you know how to do that? I don't know. 
Um, I cannot answer that because I, I mean, I only use, I only use the two layers. So I'm never really like losing a layer. Um, yeah. I, as far as objects go, when you, um, when you do this little toggle, you see your groups here, but I'll have, you know, like a bunch of groups. And of course, inside the group, you've got a million different little, um, <laughs> little guys here. Yeah. Here's an example. This is the fruit wow. stand and these are all the objects in the fruit stand over here. So, um, I really just kind of avoid the need for that the way I do this. So I can't answer if you have, if it has the uh, search function, that would be awesome if it did. Certainly. <laughs> well, for Photoshop, I know you can press control and click on something and it'll automatically go to the layer that it's on. Is that something that let's try there? it? Let's try it. Let's try it. Um, let's see. So you just have a, yeah, the, the arrow and control and then click on something. Ago. Doesn't it doesn't look, look like, like it's yeah, it doesn't anywhere. look like it's doing it. It's just selecting the one. Gotcha. Aww. Well, <laughs> Maybe there's a way. Hey, Chad, Maybe. if you know a way to find, I imagine it would like open up all of those groups and stuff and yeah. find the object in the layers panel. Uh, so that's what we're hoping for. <laughs> and MD says, Illustrator is amazing. It's true. It really is. Uh, what made you go to Illustrator, by the way? Um, I needed, I was making ads um, for Shoujo Beat. And um, the TIFF files were taking uh, a long time to send over the, uh, it was the dial-up at the time. <laughs> and so I needed to, I needed a way to provide a smaller file that would transfer faster and have less, um, chance of, you know, getting disrupted in the middle of an hour long transfer. And yeah. so I went to Illustrator and started making um, AI files because they were a lot smaller. They took 15 minutes to transfer as opposed to, you know, hour <laughs> or more. Amazing. And, um, and yeah, so that's that it was out of necessity um, to, uh, to get those files um, out to where they needed to be. For sure. And uh, but yeah, it just it's kind of amazing thinking back to that because you know a a fifty megabyte file or you know something a hundred megabytes it's nothing. I mean it's it, and then those days it was it was quite something. It took a while to transfer that and For um, sure. but yeah, so that's what drew me to Illustrator and also the ability to take these objects and put them anywhere I want, blow them up to a car. Um, or, you know, a postcard. Um, I've done that before. I've um, done a wrap for Be Cute. And I had like all of the, um, it was on a Tahoe. I had all of the characters on each side with um, their names. And then I had a giant cupcake on the back. And um, that was a lot of fun um, to design that. that. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, no, that was, it was an adventure because you, you have to drive really well when you're wrapped with something with your company's name on it. <laughs> don't crash. Not even yeah. a scuff. Okay. Yeah. Don't cut anybody mm -hmm. off on the corner. Don't take that corner too fast because, you know, they'll march up to your booth and say, hey, do you have the cupcake car? Yeah, I saw you whip around the corner over there. And you're like, oh, God. <laughs> so people will find you. <laughs> they they do. They do. And I can say that from embarrassing experience. So yeah. That's it's so uh funny. but it was a it was a good little and it, you know, it's hard to measure those things like when you're doing traditional forms of advertising like that versus uh, you know, like digital forms. And you know, it's hard to measure your return on those, but it it you get it trickling in, you get people, you know, mentioning, Hey, I saw this or it, there are ways to measure it, but you just have to be patient to get those to come in. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, you know, it may not be in, or it may be in visits to this, you know, the website, if, if that's where you're pointing that advertising, but, um, it, it's definitely something I would do again. And I'd want to, of course, redesign it and do it differently this time, but it was a good little it's a good little design. I was happy. It's so fun to see your work in big and new ways. <laughs> Where it's like, oh, oh yeah. yeah, I'm a car. What? Yeah, <laughs> it's a car. It's I on the water. That. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's um, 
it's neat to see it come alive. Like the first few t-shirt designs, it was the first plushie. I mean, even, you know, these plushies, when I get these prototypes in the mail, I just, I go kind of nuts because it's real and you can, I can touch it and I can, this is, you know, something I designed and, and it's just, it's hard to describe, um, just how, and how, um, need it is to see people uh, react to it. And um, especially kids. I love it when kids um, get a hold of the plushies because they don't want to let them go. And I just, I'm like, oh, so I just, good. It's, it's so cute. Well, and, and you've been building these characters for years and now you get to just live with them. Yeah, <laughs> like, yep. Physically, yeah, they're in your space. That's so cool. Yeah. And I've got to, I've got to remember all of their adventures too. So um, there was a, uh, one uh one little girl she came to the booth at San Diego um this past July and she uh loves the comics so she was walking by pointing at each of the characters and telling me what they did and like she pointed to happy paper and she said his toilet paper roll that ha- that holds the secrets of the universe and <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I put that on that comic back then, didn't I? Yeah, way back when there was that yeah. one reference. And, yeah. And, <laughs> but yeah, no, that was, it was so, it was so special. And um, just to see her excitement and, you know, how much she loved, she and um, uh, and her brother both loved the comics and uh, they both picked out a plushie and and hung around the booth for a while. So that was really super cool. That is so sweet. I love that story. Oh, we hope it for all artists to get that kind yes. of recognition, especially from your like loyal fan base. <laughs> yeah, and and, and the, the thing is, more. what's cool even more so about that particular family was the um, the mom started out as a, a fan herself, and so I've had several fans that have started out as as you know young adults. Have gone up through through high school, through college, got married, and now bring their kids to the booth, and um, that was an example of that. And because I remember when she was pregnant with her daughter, she was asking for um, onesies and stuff like that, and um, so it was just super cool. Super cool. And, that is um, amazing. I love it. it. It's something you that you don't really think about until it happens but I mean I've been doing this since so six so people are growing up <laughs> <laughs> isn't that weird how yeah. time passes and things yeah. happen oh I'm getting old oh, <laughs> gosh well you have been making these guys for a very long time which is like I mean it's such a testament to the staying power of these characters too have you ever drawn a character and you're like eh, I, I don't need them in the roster <laughs> or whatever I- I have a few, but I feel bad about every single one of them. And <laughs> I just, I feel guilty that I am, you know, ignoring them. Cause I have like a few of the cats have, have not had as much, of uh, you know, screen time, like fat cat. She was my first um, cat that I adopted and I feel bad because she's my little, you know, she was my little baby. (laughs) And, but I've got, you know, these other characters that I just, I get the stories for. And when I get a story for fat cat, I do draw it, but it's just, I don't get as many for her as I get for these others. And I, yeah, I've got like, I've got a B character that kind of, happened a little bit like in 2008 and then I have like a a little kind of a computer type little gremlin that gets into your computer and causes the blue screen of death and oh, no. yeah Horrible. I've not done anything with with that in a while but uh, I do have those and they just um I feel guilty I feel guilty when I don't use them <laughs> you were one of those kids who probably felt guilty like I left my stuffed animals at home they're alone exactly it's like what are they gonna do without me extreme empathy I know it's just I mean I feel yeah so but yeah no there there are there are about 20 of them I think um and it just it 
I don't really plan it like the floofs. Those were unplanned. I just kind of wanted a supporting character to draw that was kind of cute and fluffy. And then I started getting ideas. And I, um, one of the first comics with them was a parody of Mary Poppins' Let's Go Fly Kite. And so I had a floof and a spider. The spider was lending their silk to the floof to make the kite. And I just loved it so much. I kept on, you know, thinking of more stories with those characters. And then over the year, they developed, or years now, they developed and have their own storylines. And I even have my own individual floof characters. Now I've got small business floof and I've got floof and spider that kind of go on uh, Oregon Trail parody adventures and um, I've got a couple of others that that crop up again and again now. So they're not planned. They just kind of happen. And um, it just, I have to get the stories for them in order for them to continue. And, uh, but yeah, no, it's, there was one point in time where I was, this was an early on where I was making, um, where a lot of them were coming out at the same time. It was when I was doing t-shirts design, designs for the conventions back in 07 and 08. I was going to uh, each convention and bringing out like several new t-shirt designs at each one. So I was making, you know, three or, or more new characters at each convention. So I had like a, a little window in there where I had like seven, 10, 12, 15 new characters and um, very short period of time. But now it's, it's very slow. And um, if there's a new character like Granny Bear, they develop very slow. And, but once mm -hmm. they do, they kind of take their place in, in the front. So. That's awesome. Uh, by the way, we have a question from Anthony Jackson and it was, have you ever used the vector tool in Fresco? I have not actually. I play, I um, haven't downloaded Fresco. Well, I think I did actually download it, but I've just never played around with it. I was uh, focusing mostly on um, Illustrator for the iPad. And mm, yeah. um, so that's the one that I, I really, really played around in a lot. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about the difference between uh, Vector and Raster, I guess? Yeah. Um, so Vector is based on math. And um, it is uh, completely scalable, size independent. You can make it tiny or you can blow it up to be like a billboard and you don't have to worry about any loss of clarity. And um, when you're dealing with raster, you kind of have to have a little bit more planning ahead. You've got to think about, OK, I want this for print or, you know, I'm just sketching. I don't care. It can just be, you know, for screen resolution. I'm not, you know. I don't need it for anything else. Or if you're doing something that is going to be printed in large format, you definitely have to think a little bit more ahead um, because once you start um, blowing things up, there's only so much information in the file. So Photoshop or whatever can't fill in information that's not there. And whereas raster, it just multiplies. And mm -hmm. so the, it naturally, you know, maintains its clarity whereas raster you kind of you're stuck with what you you start with basically you can fudge it a little bit here and there um as I, I was working um for a while in a print shop and we would kind of we would fudge it a little bit you know like the things that are printed on a billboard you're not going to have your nose up against it so you can kind of print it at a lower dpi because with the distance that clarity returns because you're not you know you're not seeing right things up close. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the that's the main difference is um, also uh, the versatility for me. Um, I can, you know, for one of my main designs I used in San Diego was a uh, illustration I did actually here on Behance, but I kept everything separate. So I was able to um, very easily take those different elements and split them out into like a booth reel that I had playing. I just took the background element and I um, put that on the background and then had the, what is be cute and what are these characters? And then later I had some of the characters that I had on that illustration. I had them popped in front as kind of like the foreground elements on those little slides. 
And um, you can do that in, in Photoshop if, if you plan enough ahead, but this is just really easy. Pick it up, grab it, and you know, all of these elements can be just taken out and used anywhere um, if you organize and keep that, uh, keep that in kind of the back of your mind what you're going to do with it. You're thinking ahead. Yeah. <laughs> you got that frame. Good job. <laughs> yeah. It just, it's, it's sometimes it's, yeah, it's, but it, I've gotten burned. I think all you need to do is get burned a couple of times and, and uh, learn. yeah, yeah. Learn, burn and learn. That's what it is. <laughs> Quote of the day from Christy. Yeah. <laughs> burn and learn, baby. Get burned <laughs> and you <learn. laughs> uh, By the way, Wade says unplanned floofs. Both of my floofs were unplanned as well. <laughs> oh, when cats just walk up to your door and say, I choose you. <laughs> they do. I love it. They just, they pick you. And yeah. I, I think, yeah, every, um, actually I picked fat cat. She was at a rescue um, in, in Galveston and she was kind of the runt in the rescue. She was getting bullied and I was oh. like, I'm going to take you home. And um so yeah, that one, but then the others like coconut. Yeah. She, she picked me and, um, it, uh, EL, EL very much decided and planted her little bottom in front of the door and wouldn't leave. Um, <laughs> yeah. So what percentage of these cats are based on real cats? Or, like your characters are based on real life. Cats? Uh, all of the cats actually. Every single one of them. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are five cat characters and all of them have Amazing. a real life counterpart. Um, I had Coconut in here uh, before we started stream, but she decided she was uh, not going to stay. But oh, we have to have a cat meow, which is a cameo, but with cats. <laughs> or a <black laughs> tail going across tears. Like, don't mind me. Yeah, just like sitting on the keyboard. It's no big deal. Just making some artwork. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um the character that uh this one momo cheat um well i don't really have a representative representation of her right now but um that one she made a habit of uh sitting in front of me but this was in my keyboard and mouth um when i was doing uh, illustration that way she would sit in front of me between the keyboard and me and put her um head on my arm and oh. that's how she would yeah so i would i would be kind of pinned to my desk by a cat of course and uh <laughs> but she was so cute I couldn't move her I that's mean, the thing they trap you with the adorableness yes and you're like why so would you want to move me exactly uh by the way your burn and learn is taking off like fire in the chat uh we've got a <laughs> hashtag going uh we've got yes Becca says burn and learn love that reminds me of the burn I had when trying to export my vectors from fresco to illustrator lately <gasps> is it hard I wonder oh that uh, sounds frustrating yeah cross-platform stuff and everything I mean platform and uh program Woof. uh Elizabeth says burn learn earn <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth also says the updated version of live laugh love <laughs> <laughs> that's the uh the illustrator's version Exactly. I love that. All right. <laughs> Learn from your mistakes. Yes. The only way to do it. Definitely. All right. So what I'm doing now is I'm moving. So this is my rough sketch that I start out with. And when I get my line art done, I move the sketch out mm -hmm. and then I come in and start coloring. And that'll be what I do right now. All right, you guys watch and learn if you want to see how to color so cool oh, so like here's an example of my layering and keeping the characters individual so I have this ladybug character she's popped on top of granny bear's head so I can um, keep granny bear uh, intact I don't want to erase this in mm -hmm. case I want to move her around a little bit and keeping these characters in their own groups allows me to do that and not have to redraw stuff over and over so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to um, 
color granny bear first. And what I've got right here is something, it's another time saving element. This is a uh, one of my daily paintings that I had all of the characters represented in. And so I was like, okay, this is a good palette to save so I can have some consistency in my coloring throughout all of these comics. So this is Granny Bear's line right here. And I also um, take a lot of these colors for um, Lady Boop as well. So they're they're kind of a, a match set. And so if you're looking at a character lineup, I like to... Um, if I have a lot of stories that involve the same characters, I kind of like to group them together and match them together and their coloring and their kind of their mood and the design of the characters. So um, I kept their um, colors uh, around the same. Here, these are Momo Cheats colors. This is Coconut's colors. And um, that's my flu fur color. And um, then I've got uh, my spring bear colors are down here. Spring bear, she's got green ears. And um, <laughs> I've got, um, let's see, who else do I have in here? I've got my greens um, that I use all the time. And um, it's just, especially if you're doing comics, you want to have that consistency. Um, that's something in my earlier comics that bugged me because I would be going in and I would be, you know, coming up here and mixing Momo cheats colors every single time. So they'd be a little bit different every time. And it's, it's just a little something that, uh, that bugged me. And, um, and that's, that's helped also speed things up because I don't need to take time to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. I can just, you know, um, go and I already you know know that you know I've got my flat colors here and I can put those in and then I can determine based on you know the mood um, the lighting you know how I need to change those later but as long as far as this goes it's it's consistently done very good shortcut to just have yes yeah. right there and another good shortcut to keep these um uh, forever on your taskbar, you just come over to this little burger menu and hit persistent and it will always load up. And Ooh, um, so, tip. yeah, that was, that was another one that I would always be, you know, before I learned that one, I would always be opening up the same darn swatches, dragging them over. And I was like, there has to be a better way. And sure enough, there uh, has to be a better way. This is yeah. an infomercial now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, with the uh, the burn, uh, learn and earn. Yes. I was wondering how you found that out. Is it like, oh, I want a solution for this. So I'm going to Google about it or whatever. Or was it yeah. somebody telling you or? Oh. Well, um, like a lot of the things in Illustrator have been a combination. Like I learned about the blob brush from another artist I was watching on YouTube. I don't, I wish I could remember who it was, but she was working in Illustrator to make a, um, a uh, like a dress up doll game and then she was like and I'm gonna break up my little blob brush here and do this that and I was just mind blown and it was um, at the point in time where I had just gotten my tablet and I was still trying to force how I worked with a keyboard and mouse onto the tablet it was completely different set of tools but I was yeah. I didn't really know my tools to work with on the tablet. And now, of course, I'm, I'm working with a completely different set. And, um, but yeah, so I learned that one there, but the persistent um, little burger menu thing was one I Googled. And um, if there's something, you know, like that, where I'm just like, surely there's something, there's an easier or quicker way to do this. I just, I Google it and see, and if there's nothing, is there a way I can kind of, make it on my own or, or not. So, mm -hmm. um, some of those are, are how I've done, um, and learned as far as, uh, there, there's one that stands out was a definite burn and it's the, um, the, uh, the grid tool on here, the perspective grid tool, mm -hmm. because it popped up on one of the earlier days in illustrator and I couldn't figure out what it was and I couldn't figure out how to get rid of it. And I threw a tantrum for about half a day because I had this <laughs> grid in the middle of my thing. And I had an ad that was due very soon. <laughs> and I just, I, I wanted to get it gone. And I made myself a um, reminder. If I accidentally bring up the perspective grid again, it's um, I don't want this on my, uh, on my screen. And mm. it's like control I to get rid of it. <laughs> And oh, so nice. That that was the reminder I did to do that one, but that was definitely a burn that had me um 
pretty upset for half a day because I, I just didn't know what it was. I didn't know what to Google to figure out what it was. Yep. And um, it just, oh, that was frustrating. That's the real problem when you don't yeah. know what's wrong. <laughs> yeah. You don't and, know what you don't know. <laughs> yeah. You don't know what to call it. So how can you Google it and kind of have to have a little bit of information before you, uh, before you can. Yeah. That's when you like, just generally start putting in words. Like, uh, yeah. I know it's a grid. So something about the grid, <laughs> but I don't like the grid. <laughs> yeah. I don't Google want that. this grid. <laughs> uh. it, it, I see that pop up on, it always kind of touches my heart when I see it on Reddit. Cause there's, I'm on the, um, the Adobe illustrator, uh, subreddit. And I see that pop up every now and again, they have this screen cap of the perspective grid and they're, what is this? How do I get rid of it? And there are like 60 comments on it. This is a rite of passage and you know, <laughs> yeah. So we'll see how you solve the problem. Yeah. I know. Okay. But yeah, most of them are pretty nice and they, they tell them how to get rid of it. But just like, welcome to the club, my son. And yeah, it's, uh, coming of age. Good. Yes, Getting through the is. grid. Getting through <laughs> that perspective grid. But, oh, um, man. By the way, uh, Anthony Jackson is saying such cute names for your characters. Love them. Thank you. Uh, and also, what was it? Oh, MD was saying isolated mode is on. Do you know what that refers to? Uh, yes. So that's what this is. When you're in a group and you double click on the group, you go into isolation mode. So what that means is you've got um, whatever you're putting um, down is going to be solely in, into that group. You're isolating on that group. So it's almost like um, this group is its own little artboard, its own little layer, its own little environment that whatever you're doing only affects this environment. So an example of that would be if I take this eraser tool and do this, I'm only erasing what's in the group, um, mm -hmm. even though my eraser tool went over the rest of this, it's just isolated to what's in there. Um, a similar um, it's a more workable version of like if you have a group selected and just, um, well, I wouldn't say that because you can, you can't really drop things into that group from here. But if you select something um, and do this, the same thing happens, but mm -hmm. um, isolation mode actually allows you to add things into that group. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a little bit um, of my uh, secret sauce that I use all the time is the isolation mode. Spicy. It keeps things, uh, yeah. Spicy. <laughs> I like it. Yes. Thank you for sharing your secrets with us. Yeah, no problem. It's uh, there are a lot of good fun, a lot of time saving stuff. <laughs> Alessandra says, Oh, I love this. It's so cute and adorable. It really is. Everything about your work just exudes cute, which is the perfect name for be cute. You know, <laughs> and it makes it sense. It's funny because the originally, um, oops, I want to do that. I want to do that. There we go. Um, the name came from because I started out as an anime retail company and like, you know, selling manga, anime, all that good stuff, all the merchandise. And I started designing t shirts. And um, that's where the name came from. People would come up and they say, Oh, this is so cute. I love these characters. They're so cute, 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 cute. And so um, that's where the be cute came from was actual people reacting to them. And, uh, and, uh, and I think that, you know, that was, that was uh, in 2007 when I switched the name over and, um, and started going and branding that direction. And um, it, it's really neat because people, there's people that still have the shirts from before, and they'll be like, one of the first ones I did was Momo cheat in a cup of milk. And, um, and they'll, you know, they'll come up and say, I still have this orange shirt with a kitty in a cup of milk. And I'm just like, how did that shirt last that long? <laughs> You're like, wow. Oh, gee, fans. Like, <laughs> give myself a pat on the back for product uh, sourcing. Absolutely. And, yeah. Held up. <laughs> but yeah, no. And, and that's something because there, I know every single one um, that I've done and, you know, how many versions for each design. And some of them will come up with a version that I literally only printed once for like 72 pieces and it's still kicking. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> that's, that's pretty, that's pretty sweet. Definitely. Love it. 
Uh, Kendall is also likening the, uh, I think it was the isolation mode we were talking about, likening it to smart objects in Photoshop. So if you guys are familiar yeah, with that. Yeah, um, yeah that I would be, that would that. be very, yeah, definitely. Kendall on top of it. <laughs> and Bruce says color is so satisfying. Does it feel like coloring in a coloring book kind of? <laughs> yeah. And it's, you know, it, I really, I love doing color, but I spend a lot of time on line art. Um, cause mm -hmm. it's just, it, they're both my happy place, but I really love putting in the, the details and figuring out the lines and what I'm doing. And then color is kind of like a, a different brain mode where I'm thinking about mood and, you know, all of this, this other stuff. And, um, it's just, it's a different beast, but I love them both. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they're, they're very fun. Uh, both of them. Definitely. Yeah. This you is just one. add a gradient. Yeah. 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 So this is sometimes what I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll, um, I'll do, I like to keep, since I'm designing for print, um, print kind of notoriously doesn't handle gradients very well. So um, I like to keep my gradients pretty, pretty small, like from just this, you know, different slight change to a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. I don't really go from, you know, red to blue, like those big jumps very often, because I find like, especially when I'm printing in the comic books, um, they come through a lot better. It's a lot more subtle. You don't get the banding. So I keep my gradients pretty small when I, when I use them. And, um, what I do is I draw the, uh, the flat object in first, and then I apply the gradient with a gradient tool up here later and um, nice. come in here and edit. And um, sometimes I like to play around with a freeform gradient. Like if I'm, if I want to be lazy on my daily, I'll color with a <laughs> gradient. <laughs> I'll do this one and I'll just drop in a bunch of colors and be like, okay, that's cool. I just need to add a little value here and then I'm done. But usually it's just the main linear uh, gradient that I'm using. Nice. So with you, uh, we've got about an hour left. <laughs> uh, right. And also I wanted to ask you about with your, um, your process, especially with dailies, how do you come up with ideas for all these? That is, um, so when I was originally, uh, it's a lot easier said than done. Um, I've got when I was originally doing it, I had a ton of ideas. I was just like, okay, I'm going to, you know, study this, uh, frame of animation, or I'm going to, I've got this that I'm focusing on. Like for the first hundred days, I was focusing on composition and I would literally draw out rule of thirds and I would be doing something along those lines. And that was my focus there. So I would start out with that. And, um, that's how I would kind of get it done and get the ideas then. But once I had the, um, I started out with uh, Inktober in 2015. Oh. And so that was a subject that I loved. I loved Halloween and I love the fall. So that kind of got me off running and with just a ton of ideas, because not only are there prompt lists galore everywhere, um, you know, I had my own Halloween ideas that I wanted to do. And so definitely um, use prompt lists and make your own. Um, but once you have the habit established, um, at least personally, I'm always kind of watching for the ideas. I'm always like thinking, you know, I have to do my daily. So I'm going to be thinking just a little bit about it. If I see something, I'm always watching for it. And usually I get my idea pretty early in the day. I'm like, okay, cool. I got it. I can draw it, you know, in my schedule. Um, but some days I am sitting there at a blank canvas and I'm just like, okay, you know, what am I feeling right now? Do I, am I really tired? Would I like some milk and cookies? Okay. I'm going to draw some floops, bringing me some milk and cookies. <laughs> and so some of them are situational like that. And, um, very much like, um, I was sick recently. So I was drawing a couple ones where the floops were helping. Um, I think Momo cheat was uh, a little sick. And so, um, so some of them are kind of situational based on life. Definitely. If I'm, um, traveling, I'll do something like that. Um, there were a couple of times where I was, uh, with my family and we had just had this, this huge football win from, um, my, uh, college team. And so, you know, they were, 
you know, I, I did the characters, you know, in the, in the pretty gear and, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so that was, um, that was an easy no brainer for me on that one. And it just, it really, um, when you're doing a daily habit like that, it's just getting in the habit is, is the hardest part, but once you're there, it's, it's part of your daily routine, you know, it's there and you start looking and thinking about it and you're not stuck because it, it's just, I don't know. I think it was really fortunate that I started when I did with something I was so excited about because it kind of took out the dread. Because I hear a mm -hmm. lot of artists, they're like, oh my God, you know, doing Inktober, drawing something new every day. And um, they dread it. And I think that's a really negative emotion to go at it um, with because it kind of almost sets you up for failure already because that negative emotion makes you think of things like, oh, wow, well, I need to do this before that, or you naturally want to avoid it. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, flooding your schedule with things you love is, is really the, the best way I know to get that habit in place. So it's kind of like surrounding yourself with donuts. Of course you want to eat all the donuts. You don't want to avoid the donuts unless you hate donuts. So surround yourself with donuts, get the habit established. And then when you have to tackle, you know, tougher subjects, when you're like, okay, I'm going to study something I don't like. Like um, if I'm looking at a list of the areas I need to approve, improve, and uh, you know, I've been avoiding when you're in that more positive and open mindset, it's easier to tackle those tougher subjects and study those things. Yeah. Um, but it's de there are definitely days when um, it has been absolutely excruciating um, to do them. And those are days like when I've lost a pet and, and stuff, but oh, I wow. still did it. And I think it's in those times, and you know, I fed those emotions of that day into that painting and, um, paintings now, but, um, but that's, you know, it, it's in those hard times when you don't want to do it. That's it's most important that you do, um, show up and, uh, and do it, even if it's small. And that's another thing you got to set, um, a reasonable challenge for yourself. You got to make it challenging enough but easy enough that you can give yourself a break. So uh, mm -hmm. as an example, mine is 30 minutes. I have to draw for at least 30 minutes. And um, it doesn't matter if it's a finished sketch, if it's, you know, a beautiful illustration, as long as I hit that 30 minutes, I'm good. And um, it, because it, th that came from trying and failing to do daily painting several times. Uh, I set the bar low, way too low one time where I was only asking myself to do a pencil sketch and mm -hmm. I lasted about two months and I just, I was like, it's so easy. I'll just do two tomorrow. And then two tomorrow turns into five, turns into 10, turns into 30. And you're just like, I, I'm not going to do it now. And that's how yeah. a, a habit fails. So yeah. burnt out. But, yep. And it just, it, you got to know your speed. You got to know where your bar is, and then you got to be able to adjust it accordingly. Um, when, when you need to, when things get too easy, okay, then let's, you know, adjust it up. Um, let's try something. Why am I doing it this way? Um, let's try, you know, doing a little bit more, or maybe we're going to, you know, go for an hour or, I mean, not an hour, but, you know, just yeah, try just something to, a yeah, little more something that's a little bit more, um, just a little bit more. And, uh, and it's, it's, you know, it's, you also kind of have to do an assessment a self-assessment and say, okay, these are the places where I'm weak. And if you have that list, you kind of always have something you, you can do. Mm -hmm. Um, if you've got that list of, okay, you know, I'm, I'm weak on figure drawing. And if you're, you're stuck with a blank canvas and a daily drawing, you know that you're weak on figures, hit up and do a gesture sketch or something like that. Definitely. And, uh, uh, by the way, you were talking about donuts and magically Jack Watson showed up in the chat. I think <laughs> <laughs> she knows about we all summoned, the donuts. We summoned her. We said donuts. <laughs> Hi, Jack. We said donuts. <laughs> Hi, Jack. How mm. are you doing? <laughs> By the way, uh, Elizabeth Mock has two great questions. Uh, so one was, how long have you been doing web comics? Um, it's been, let's see, I started my 
Well, I've been trying since around 2009. And I say that with qualifications because I tried um, and failed several times because I set, I set the bar too high. I was like, okay, I'm going to do three per week. And I was at the time doing keyboard and mouse. And if I had taken the moment to self-examine and say, hey, uh, it takes you a week to get one illustration done on this, let alone a comic. And so that was a failure that I had tried and redone several times. And then um, once I got my skills up, I started with doing once a week. And then um, right now I'm doing twice a week. And that's a good spot that allows me to do more detailed or less detailed if I want to, depending on my schedule and other work. And um, but I've been doing that since I think I started that two um, in 2018. So it's been a couple of years wow. now that I've been doing weekly comics and um, I've only taken a few breaks. And usually those are uh, when I had no power or um, like when life when I was, decided you yeah, needed a I know. break. <laughs> <laughs> when life was just like, no, nope. cut it down. <laughs> we're cutting you off. We're cutting you off. It's okay. Yeah. It really most is. importantly, it is. And that's something that you got to remember too. I mean, it's okay. You got to take a break. And For sure. Uh, also, the second question that Elizabeth had was, uh, do you optimize your web comics for certain social media platforms? I do. Yes. Um, actually, I have. Um, so let me zoom out. And um, so this is what I um, think of as my uh, mobile view. Like I'll post it on um, the website. I'll post it on Twitter. I'll do this layout on Facebook. And then this will also be in general, if it fits on the page, what I use in the physical comic book. And then for um, Instagram, for example, what I'll do is I'll just, um, I'll just show the setup right here real quick. Um, I'll come over here and I'll create square artboards. Um, whoops, come on. Here we go. And I do uh, 900 um, by 900 here. And what I do is I plan out um, one frame per carousel swipe for Instagram. So this one, for example, will be one, two, three, four, five. And this little guy right here is going to be a seamless swipe. And the way I do that is I turn on um, smart guides right here. And then I click and drag and it snaps. See that snap right there? Mm -hmm. That'll be, um, once I export that, this will be two sequentially numbered fr um, frames that are seamless on Instagram. Nice. So um, that's a good little trick. And what I did here, let me just do it again. See that little double right there? Um, that's me holding down the Alt key and that's a, a quick and easy copy and paste. And so just, you can do that like that and like this, whoops. Let's just do that again. There we go. And um, and yeah, so that's how I lay those out. And then I uh, do a quick export and just export my artboards that automatically numbers them. And then I can push those into Creator Studio or whatever I'm using to post. And um, so that's Instagram only. And um, on Webtoons, I am still trying to decide how I want to upload to there. I feel that it would be better if I use my Instagram panels because they're bigger on that mobile interface and it is a vertical interface. Mm -hmm. um, but then I've got to figure out, okay, well, these seamless swipe panels, uh, that's going to be a problem. So I right. kind of have to do a little retooling anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so I, as far as webtoons and tapas and that type goes, I'm still figuring out how I want to export for that. But this is definitely the variation I do for Instagram that I found that works pretty well. And um, all of my pages, since I know I'm limited with uh, 10 swipes, I won't have any more than 10 frames on here. And yeah. um, the last thing I do specific for Instagram is I do a, um, once it comes up here, um, I do a call to action on the last panel and uh, I do, come on, here we go. This is my current one for uh, the summer. Um, I just do a little call out. So I really, when I'm doing my comic, I'll have nine 
frames that can be comic frames. Mm -hmm. I want to keep this one for my call out, you know, asking them to press all the buttons, check out my shop and um, do that. So yeah, this, uh, I can drag this down. I've got these, I started doing the themed ones. um, What is that? 2020 winter, 2020, fall, 2020, spring, 2021, and then summer, fall, winter, spring, and then summer. And I'll be doing fall, probably uh tomorrow on behance um for uh, for this year if you want to see what the new call to uh, action is going to yes. be yes <laughs> we would love a sneak peek coming <laughs> soon yeah no uh, I, I love i love doing fall stuff so it's always a treat it is do you ever find yourself just like saving up that energy like okay yes. i want to draw fall stuff but like it's still summer so yes. like hold on hold on exactly <laughs> yes and that's what i was struggling with that just recently because i'm like i'm ready i'm seeing like you know all the fall stuff all the halloween stuff i want i'm i'm there i'm ready and i'm just like but it's still august i can't draw leaves <laughs> falling in august i um, mean you can but yeah I, it's just yeah. a little it's soon it's too soon uh do you still do inktober by the way i do yes um i have i don't have uh a plan yet for this year mm-hmm. but um i sometimes follow inktober prompts i sometimes do draw um mm-hmm. i also will do my own prompt list um and then recently i did um this was an undertaking that was pretty uh I, I think I bit off more than I could chew, but I decided to do a story. I wanted to use Inktober to, in essence, create a children's book in 30 days or 31 days. And um, I didn't get my story mapped out ahead of time. So I um, was literally writing it and figuring it out on the fly. So, but that, I was excited that I did that because it did push me out of my comfort zone. And For sure. um, that was, that was the important thing was to get out of the comfort zone um, and uh, do stuff that helps, helps me grow. Definitely. Um, we love to see it. Yeah. I've tried different um I like to try a different, uh, uh, like medium. Like I've tried, uh, whoops. I've tried, um, like India ink. And I also use the Windsor Newton metallic inks. I've tried. Yeah, no, that one was a lot of fun. Um, I really, really love doing the ink washes, um, Mm -hmm. that one year. And, um, let me see. Another year I did Inktober and, um, I did, uh, robots. I designed robots. So I did a digital Inktober and I did a traditional Inktober and designed all these different robots. Um, um, that was, that wasn't easy. Were they adorable? They were. They were. were I'm imagining them in your style. And I think that would be so, so cute. Oh my gosh. They were, um, actually I've got, I think I can. I can show the, I've got it in here. Oh, excellent. You got it on the physical book. Yeah. So what I did was I, um, I did themes. I did a lot of like Halloween robots, like if a, a pumpkin carving robot, <laughs> I did, um, a, uh, a kitchen, uh, kind of tool, like to help you in the kitchen robot with all the different utensils. Um, so cute. I did a, I did a, like a handyman robot. Cause you're always losing all your tools when you're, you know, DIY. I've got a little, um, he's there. I've got a, this one I was really proud of because I, I included, um, you can't see it, but he has a find my screen where you can tell him to find your hammer, find your screwdriver, <laughs> find your, you know, painter's tape and he'll run around and find it. Um, oh my gosh. I love it. I Those did, ideas uh, are so original too. Just like Oh yeah. Think of robots, but you're like really going a step further. Yeah. This one, creative. this one was a, uh, let's see if I can get him up there. He's a, <laughs> a, a Dewey. Uh, what was, did I call him? A Dewey unit two. He's a traveling my little library. So oh my from, gosh. Yeah. From the, Dewey, the decimal. Dewey decimal system. Oh yeah. my gosh. That's adorable. Yeah, that okay. needs to be like a library uh, mascot. Like yeah. I bet you that some librarians would be like all over that. Yeah, I did so the, uh, I did the dog, dog bot. 
I did a dog bot and a cat bot. So one that would play with your dog, toss the ball, pick up the poop. And then this one that has all sorts of little fuzzies and and dongles to swing around for the cat. Um, But yeah, that was a fun one. And that one, actually, I just did during the week. I gave myself a break on the weekend on that one now that I'm remembering it gave yourself a break you know yeah yes. <laughs> everybody should get a break but uh I love that and I also love that you have your own physical work in book form these are for sale on your site yes 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 they are um I do a new I do two each year um I do the comic compilation and then I do the daily paint compilation so the daily paints are only um are uh about 90 pages and the comics are um the comics are 158 and so I do those each year and um get those published I have a publisher um a printer that I really like um they're out of Michigan um and I've gone through a few uh the first one I used was Kness and he was a great guy but um I just, they didn't have as many customizations that I wanted. You only had like uh, one cover type that you could pick. And with this new one, I was able to um, do like on this, I could do a matte, um, a matte kind of silk touch cover. I could print on the interior of the cover and I could do a lot of different things that I couldn't do with that first printer. So um, I've gone through a few, but I'm really happy with my current one. Um, and, uh, they do really good work. Um, That's it just awesome. as with, as with anything, you, you got to stay on top of, of all of that because you can, uh, definitely get, um, behind schedule if you're not, um, keeping, you know, tabs on where things are and so yeah. And also you want to make something that's quality. And obviously you found that with like the specific okay touch that you wanted and the print quality. That's awesome. Yeah, no. And it's, you know, I didn't, when I first started um, looking into it and, you know, deciding that I wanted to put these in a book form, I -hmm. would go around to the conventions and I would, um, especially at San Diego, I would go uh, uh, and walk around there and see, because a lot of artists that publish little zines or little sketchbooks, they'll do a shout out to their printer on the back. And that's how I found the first one. And oh, um, nice. so it's a, it's really, it, it's really good to just, if you're, you're wanting to create something, if you're wanting to try a new product, just walk around and see um, what a lot of other people have done and um, how they do stuff. And you can get a lot of good information that way. And um skip over a lot of, uh, problems on the way. If Agreed. you, if you kind of do that. Definitely. Uh, by the way, MD Nizam is saying legend Sanderson. <laughs> uh, and Anthony Jackson says a traveling library. Awesome. And Lisa thinks that your robots would all be great stickers, which I agree. Oh, with. that's true. I, yeah. There, and especially with the theme song, cause I did like one of them was like a cafe bot and he, like, he floats out to your table with your coffee and yeah. Yes. And <laughs> Love that. So yeah. So I never thought about doing the stickers. That would be fun. Definitely. I might do those. I might do that. All right, everybody, keep your eye out. <laughs> oh, and Bruce stickers says so that fun. you can you can sign and draw a picture on the inside jacket, by the way. Is that for oh, your books? Yes, I do that. Um I I give that as an option on the website and usually I just on the interior, um, that's actually something I built into the, the file. I've got a blank page here that I can just nice. draw and sketch on. And, um, but yeah, so I do that and um, I have that. Did I do that on here too? Yeah, I've got that blank in there for that too. Mm-hmm. So, but um, that's, that's a lot of fun because I'll have, um, um, I like doing the surprise. If I know, um, like if the uh, person who's ordered has ordered a bunch of other character stuff, like if they order a bunch of flute stuff or a bunch of Momo cheat stuff, I know they love Momo cheat. So I'll draw her in the, um, in the, in the little sketch section. Um, but I like coming up with those little surprises and it's, you know, everything is content. So I, you know, mount up my phone and film it while I'm trying. And so I get a nice little reel out of it, but I can't do and post the reel until um, the package has been delivered because I don't want them to 
to see it before. Definitely. That's very sweet of you. I like that, <laughs> like keeping I, it as a secret and also just doing that. I feel like those are the moments that people really remember. And that's why you have diehard fans that have shirts after 15 years and you're like, yeah. oh, hey, I still love your stuff. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, no, it's it's a lot of fun. And it's, you know, I, um, I got a lot of what I do as a small business, I got from these small businesses that I would um, go to when, you know, I was young, when I was collecting anime and stuff, one that really stuck with me, um, they were a small shop, gosh, I can't, I think they were out of Atlanta or something, but they signed every single um, packing slip with a personal thank you and their name. And I just, I love that. And so that's, that's what I do. I've kind of, I've, I've developed it a little bit more. I do a little, um, a little card that I draw their name and then a little sketch and then I sign and then it has a thank you for your business. And uh, you know, this, this helps support and helps make more cute things happen. Um, mm -hmm. But it's seeing that and seeing how other people, you know, do and treat their customers that made me feel good that I wanted to bring into my business. So, um, good looking out. <laughs> yeah, it is. And it, it just, you never know where that stuff will come and, uh, and, and you never know where you can learn. Um, Definitely. Yeah. Never discount something. Uh, yeah. you might learn something very important, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. by the way, uh, Elizabeth Mock is saying, I would never have guessed that this was made in Illustrator with the vector program, uh, probably because the line work looks fairly loose. The effect is a cool uh, look. Thank you. Yeah, love it. And it's so true that like, yes, you have all the vector, but it doesn't have the trappings of usual vector art because mm -hmm. I think you're using that brush to really, it, it feels like you're still sketching it out and you keep that looseness very well. Yeah. It, and that, you know, I, I credit that with um, actually Inktober. I feel like I come away from doing analog stuff, always learning something, always kind of leveling up my inking um, because, you know, there's, it's that permanence that I don't have a choice. If I make a mistake, I got to figure out how to do it. I don't have the undo. I've got to, you know, think about my lines a little bit more where I'm placing, what I'm doing, and how I'm drawing it. And I always feel like I come back from Inktober and traditional painting exercises with, with something new that I bring into this. And I definitely think that's helped me um, level up my inking a lot, um, actually. Would you recommend that for other artists? Oh, you yeah. Level up your line work? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I think that, you know, it's very easy to um, get stuck in a mode and it's, mm. it's very easy to get trapped in that comfort zone and say, I love this. I love doing this, but you don't grow in that comfort zone. Um, you only grow when you're just outside of it. When you're um, there's a quote by David Bowie that I really love. And he's talking about, you know, playing to the gallery, but you do your best work when you're kind of treading water, when you don't have all those habits to rely on, when you have to think of new ways to do something or figure out a way to do something. And that's when you've got your most creative ideas coming in because you don't have anything to fall back on. And, um, and so that's, I definitely encourage artists to get out of their comfort zone in that way. And a lot of them, I, I, a lot of people, I think, are not very comfortable with traditional art unless you've really kind of gotten, uh, it, whether through school or whatever, or your interests. I think a lot of people rely on digital art a lot and they just kind of are afraid of, you know, traditional a little bit. But I think it's just an opportunity to grow and really expand your skill set um, and uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's, it's not, you're not going to lose anything by doing it. If you make a crappy drawing, just throw it in the trash. It's not the end of the world, but it's the end of the world. If you don't learn, if you don't grow, if you, it's the end of your creative journey in an essence, you know, and, and expanding that and growing out and developing it as an artist continually and bringing out new stories and ideas if you're just stuck. And that's why I, you know, I really try and force myself to do things that I'm not comfortable with um, because I always learn and I always grow and I bring something different um, back when I'm done. Wholeheartedly agree. Yes. <laughs> All of that. <laughs> 
Uh, by the way, Elizabeth Mock says, I can't do October, or I'm sorry, <laughs> I can't do October this year. Just <laughs> know to that. I'm just going to skip it. <laughs> <laughs> or sorry, I would do Inktober, but I always lose the second day because it's my birthday. <laughs> Aww. So, Eh, well, I've seen people definitely draw before October and like oh, yes. build up a backlog before the month starts. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely planning ahead. And I've seen um, several people, they'll, uh, they'll just, they'll either map out the prompt list or, um, you know, do a rough sketch um, in September leading up to it. And I, I can totally see how that would help so much just to have it ready to go. So all you have to do is do your lines or do your ink. You don't have to have that extra hurdle of like, uh, what am I actually going to draw or what, you know, figuring out this vague prompt idea and how to deal with it. Um, For sure. I think my most successful year in Inktober, I did uh, digital sketches on the iPad and then nice. used it as like a light uh, table for watercolor <gasps> paper. And then like, very did, cool. Yeah. Oh, that's it awesome. worked really well. <laughs> that is nice. That is a great idea. Who wants to do that? <laughs> that is a great idea. Yeah. And it's just, it's a really good thing, I think, for uh, regularity to get into that habit of having some kind of prompt. I mean, I don't ever follow the prompt list. I basically mm -hmm. just made my own, but um, I think what you're doing with the comics is exactly that, the building of habits like we were talking about. Mm -hmm. It's really, really key for artists, especially if you're feeling a little like out of ideas or not sure how to grow. Mm -hmm. No, very much so. Mm -hmm. By the way, I love the colors that you've chosen for this first panel. Was that all from predetermined uh, the color palette or was that some of it on the fly? Um, actually, a little bit like this back here. This was all on the fly because I wanted to create a sense of distance back there. So I didn't want to have all of the contrast and vibrancy of what was forward. So I just went in here and um, did my uh, sliders to kind of desaturate it a little bit and push it back behind there a little bit, give it a little distance. Um, but I realized I forgot my granny bear's little eye. Uh, she's got little wrinkles oh, under her eyes. She's got to look a little older. She's a little <laughs> older. And now I got to fix this, but I forgot that when I was drawing her over here. I'm like, I didn't do that right. <laughs> So it's when going back and fixing things that you have to consider all the layers and such. Yeah. And there, um, I learned that there was one that, uh, this was actually on a day, it was a Super Bowl day and I did my daily drawing with one of the characters and something was bugging me and I just didn't realize I couldn't see what it was. I was like, what is missing? And I have a taxi cat character and he's always wearing this red sweater. I completely forgot to dress my cat. <laughs> so I'm like, he's and I didn't, yeah, he was. And I was just like, I went to bed. I was like, whatever it's done. And then I got up and I looked at it and I'm like, oh, he's naked. <laughs> I didn't draw his sweater. That's what I was That's missing. Why. So yeah, it's oh, uh, so funny. But uh, yeah, so sometimes like I've forgotten to draw Momo Cheat's whiskers and her, I never forget her Wi-Fi symbol, but um, I, uh, I've forgotten some important things before. And usually I can remember to do them before publishing. I'll see it like a spelling error, but, mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes, you know, those, those things happen. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And I honestly like it as a viewer to kind of see like, oh yeah, whoops. Yeah. <laughs> like exactly. there is a human behind the art. It's never yeah. going to be this machine made perfect. Um, by the way, we've got a question from Elizabeth Mock saying, uh, or asking, do you think that digital inking works for Inktober or should you keep it traditional ink for the spirit of the challenge? Um, you know, I think it, I think as long as the challenge is there and you're learning, I think that's good. Cause I mean, the whole thing about Inktober is to push your boundaries to, um, to learn something new. So as long as you've got that element, whether, you know, it, with what you're focusing on is actually just the daily habit, 
um, definitely that that's a big hurdle to get over. And if, you know, adding the daily habit and inking together is going to make you fail, then definitely, you know, opt for one over the other, say, okay, I'm going to practice my ink, or I'm going to try and get each of these drawings done every day. Mm -hmm. And I think it's okay. I mean, I think holding yourself hostage and saying, I have to do it this way or that way, um, kind of defeats the purpose. I think the purpose is to push out of your comfort zone and grow the traditional uh, rule was you have to do ink. But I think that I think beneath that is the element of challenge and growth. So as long as you're, you've got that there, I think do whatever you want to do. Um, Agreed. And I mean, certainly if you're only used to, you know, doing a sketch or finishing something every like two weeks, that everyday thing is going to be a huge challenge and it's enough and it's Definitely. okay to let that be enough, at least in my opinion. Agreed. Uh, we also have a question from Bruce uh, asking about working in CMYK. Uh, does that affect your posting on socials for the color accuracy? Not really. I mean, I just, I always have it. I kind of always set it in that color mode because I know I'll forget and um, to change it. So I'm kind of thinking ahead that I want this to look good in print. And whether um, it's a little bit, you know, a little bit more dull or muted on the screen, that's okay. Um, I just, I always want to have that ultimate publishing form in mind. And I want to optimize for like kind of the most difficult one because CMYK, I want it to look good printed because yes. that's something that people are going to take with them. That's something that I'm going to show at a booth. That's something that I'm going to, you know, give away to somebody. I want that to be, um, to be optimal and, um, it, and, you know, like when I'm going back and preparing for print, it's nice to not to have to do all that editing to make sure that all the colors, well, this is going to show up weird or the only way, the only place I've really had a problem with it is in exporting from Illustrator to After Effects. That really makes things go wild when I have it in CMYK and it's going over there and it's, and it's kind of neonizing some of these colors. Yep. <laughs> um, and so I have to think about it in that case, but, uh, but otherwise I think it's, it's, you know, it's worked out pretty well for me. Uh, Definitely. Uh, how many times have you done that from Illustrator to After Effects kind of move? I did uh, the big one. I did uh, my intro. I did a new stream intro and an outro. And um, that was a big learning experience. Well, I also, also did a stinger transition where I have leaves kind of coming down and then folding back up. Um, so technically three. Um, and I did, um, what I did was this little guy right here was a lifesaver. This is Overlord. And um, what I can do with this is with a click, you can send it up to After Effects. So I've got, and it'll maintain groups, mm -hmm. which is, crucial for me because I've got, you know, everything grouped and stuff. So really all I have to do is think about it on an element level. I'm animating this character. I need to group the ears and the ear color. I've got to group the arms and the arm color and have that. And then I can send it up and animate all those individual elements um, with this little guy right here. And, um, but yeah, so um, I did that and I had, um, I animated uh, I had my floofs bouncing up and down. I used a formula to animate those. Um, I didn't do uh, an actual rigging type animation and frame by frame there. I just did that through the automatic formula. Um, and I also did that same thing with uh, waving like reeds and stuff. My characters are sitting over a uh, river and uh, they're fishing in the intro and in the outro, it's nighttime. And so I animated the sparkles on the... Um, on the river, I animated some of the grasses and stuff waving, and um, I lightly animated the characters. And then mm -hmm. I threw in sparkles at the end because sparkles. <laughs> Gotta <laughs> have sparkles. sparkles. Come on. Gotta have sparkles. <laughs> Kendall screams in the chat, yes to Overlord, which I laughed when you said the name of the tool because it sounds so silly. It is. I love it though. The, the company that makes it, um, they have fun names for all of their, uh, tools. Um, they've got, 
what there's overlord and there's um there's another one that um does photoshop to uh after effects i think that's got another fun name and um but yeah i really i, I saw that um i want to say i i saw that recommended um i was looking at youtube um to help me out with that because i started uh I started with a stinger and it was kind of a disaster um, because oh, no. it was the first time. Yeah, <laughs> it was the first time I had worked in um, After Effects. And so I was thinking, hey, I can just, you know, have everything layered out and I can, imp and, you know, import it into After Effects. And um, it I think it, what it did was it clipped everything down to my artboard. So I would have to go into every single element individually and release that in order for me to be able to, to do stuff. And what Overlord does is it kind of combines all those steps and makes them editable in one click. So nice. that was a, a learning experience on the stinger transition thing. A that burn and learn. <laughs> yeah, it's a, that was a big burn and learn because that, <laughs> that tiny little like five second stinger took me a lot longer to do than the, the intro outro loop because of that learn. Uh, learn and burn or burn and learn. Whew. Well, I'm glad that you learned and yeah. uh, sorry you got burnt. <laughs> yeah. It was a good burn. No, it was a good because that, that helped, you know, in the future. It, it's just, yeah. Yeah. The first one is really where you want to have the lesson learned as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, Wade just uh, tacked on to our little Inktober conversation saying, I will also point out if you miss a day or two of Inktober or any challenge, Mermaid, et cetera, that's mm -hmm. okay too. Just look Absolutely. at the progress you've made and just try taking or taking, trying the challenge. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> very good point, Wade. Yes. Thank you, Wade, for that. Cause it is a very good, uh, point just to make sure everybody knows from our perspective at least that the progress is what you're trying to go for whatever yeah. progress you see fit uh yeah. but yeah uh, missing a day or two does not impede that no and it's just it's and what I would say if you let missing a day tank your entire challenge that's the loss that is yeah you know it, it's it's not how you fall it's how you get back up again after that fall and it just you, you need Christy. to Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, burn and learn. There you go. But it's just, yeah, you just got to get back up and no one's watching. I mean, no one really is, you know, shaking their finger. You missed a day. It's, yeah. Come on. It's, <laughs> it's the, and that's something that I think it seems like every year there's some drama about Inktober and it's, it, it's just, I think people forget the joy of, you know, you got to concentrate on the joy of drawing and the, and the joy of learning and the challenge and, you know, don't put so many stipulations on there and be so um, anxious about them. It's, it's just drawing. This is something that we're supposed to enjoy and love. And, and that's what I always come back to. If I'm getting frustrated with something, you know, it, it helps me to step away and remember, you know, I love doing this and I love these characters and let me just concentrate on that while I'm getting through this frustrating, you know, thing, mm -hmm. whatever it happens to be. Maybe those are the days that you can look back at the nice things that people have said as well, because there is a whole fan base out there who really look forward to seeing your creations. Yeah, I have a cute, helps. <laughs> I have, it does. I have a cute file and um, I have, uh, sometimes I'll take screen caps of messages people send me and yes. um, I just, I keep that and on the bad days that, that really is a lifesaver. So definitely if you love an artist, tell them and because you never know when they need to hear it. I mean, you could see they could be happy and joyful 100% of the time, but you don't know what's going on behind that screen. You don't know what they're going through and sometimes it, those little notes, those little, you know, stories that you tell, Hey, my daughter loved this, or, you know, I gave this to my wife and, you know, it, that really helps. That really helps big time. So, so, so true. Yeah. So everybody reach out to your favorite creator and just say something nice. Say something nice. Say, thank you. Say, keep going. Keep going, Christy. Yeah. You can do it. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it.
<laughs> oh, uh, Wade is bringing over a question from YouTube uh, saying, Laura is asking, Christy, do you have any tips for making your comic characters look like the actual person? I trace over an illustrator uh, in Illustrator to animate in After Effects, but I don't like the, my results. Thanks. Hmm. So... <sighs> when you're it sounds like um like uh what is that called uh when you're doing animation from real life it's a, uh starts with an s is it, or no is it rotoscoping? are you it's thinking rot rotoscoping rotos yeah. i think of rotoscoping Where you i think animate over a person yeah, basically yeah like, yeah yeah um I, I think as with anything um if you don't I think it's just practice it's just doing it over and over again and leveling up those skills. If you don't like what you're drawing, um, if, if you're, if there's a problem with your output, you got to look at the input. You got to look at what am I practicing? What am I, um, if I don't like the portions on these faces, why is that? Are they, um, are they, are they misproportioned? Is the, is the value structure of these scenes that I'm making, is that wrong? Where do I need to practice? What are these areas? And I think if you kind of um, take that disappointment and focus it and say, okay, you know, let's take off the layers and let's see why am I disappointed in this? Mm -hmm. And I did that with my, um, my comics originally, because I was just like, I, I don't like um, I, I can't figure out how to go from one frame to another, that gap between the frame. I don't know where to place it. I don't know, you know, if I'm putting this action here, can I do a follow through punch in the next one and have it understandable or is it too big of a gap? And so I identified those areas that I was un, unhappy with and I was like, okay, let's practice them. Let's research, let's Google, let's read some books on, you know, the people that have um, done this before that I really admire. Um, that's something I, um, I like to suggest a lot is if you admire an artist and how they're doing their work, kind of scratch and see if you can figure out what their influences are, what their um, the people they idolize are, and try to follow some of those tracks in the snow to see if you can learn some of the things that they learn and bring it into your work and improve that way. Um, it just... Um, I don't think there is a easy solution to that um, other than just practice and patience, um, especially when you're looking at bringing something from here onto the page. Um, it really is just a, you got to you got to put in those uh, those hours, those weeks, those years For sure. and, and kind of get it that way. I think I remember in art school, somebody saying something like uh you know, the difference between an artist and everybody else basically is just, they don't quit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as long as you keep going, you'll get somewhere. And yeah. yeah, that's perseverance really is the big thing. Yeah, it is. That's, um, that's one of my favorite quotes. I've got it actually, I love Zen pencils. He doesn't publish anymore, but, um, what he would do was take famous quotes and then illustrate them in comic form. And I have his one from, uh, Calvin Coolidge, the press on quote, Mm -hmm. um, I have that in a poster form on my wall and, and mm -hmm. nothing, um, is, will, will win out over, um, perseverance and just pressing on it's, it's really, it, it's really all it is. I mean, it doesn't matter how quickly you get there. As long as you keep going, you'll get there. If you take two steps, if you jump, you, you'll get there eventually. You just have to stay with it. Exactly. Don't give up. <laughs> yep. Don't give up. Don't give up. You got this. By the way, hello to uh, Laura who asked that question and Wade reposted, but uh, Laura came over here to be hands. Thank you for coming over. We love seeing you. And also uh, Stino, I believe came over from YouTube as well. Thank you guys. Uh, Welcome. Yeah, I know. We got a whole fam going here. Uh, okay. Everybody loves you in the chat as usual. Aww. There's regular just like, you're the best. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And loving the tips as well. MD says tips of the month. <laughs> so happy to be here. <laughs> We're loving having you. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you uh, so much for having me here. Of course. Uh, also, I was wondering, I just said in art school, I was wondering, what's your background? Do you, did you go to school or self-taught or what? I'm mostly self-taught. Yeah. Um, so nice. I've got, I did some uh, design in um, college, but as far as comics and art and all of this is just me. Uh, 
well, all the books back here and a uh, combination of YouTube. I did um, do schoolism uh, for a little bit. I went through a couple of those courses there. And, nice. um, but really a lot of it is just me uh, just stumbling through the jungle, trying to figure things out. <laughs> <laughs> I like that visual. I'm just crazy yeah, with just, machete. Like, oh. Yeah, it's just like, I will figure out these vectors <laughs> someday. Mm, I'll do it. <laughs> no, I think you pretty much figured it out, but uh <laughs> we love seeing it. And uh Laura is saying, uh, by the way, love your stuff. And so MD was saying, calm and creative and passionate. This is all the things <laughs> Christy is. By the way, we have about 10 minutes left in the stream. Uh and uh after this, we're gonna have a boot camp with Alex Lazarus. So definitely stick around. Yay! Yeah, yeah, we love to see it. And then another cute thing is going to happen after that as well today. We've got Cody Bear with uh, the doggest prompt, which is going to be, <gasps> I believe, yummy treats. Come on. Oh, goodness. Yes. Very cute stuff happening That'll be here. Wonderful. <laughs> Love it. Oh, and Wade's posting your links again. Thank you, Wade. Thank you so much. How did you come up with the name of, the, well, it's Ladybug, but it's like a lady boop, right? Um, well, this character, she actually came um, about before Granny Bear, and I had this uh, idea for a character that um, would, when a, when my other characters were struggling, she would come and just boop them on the nose and say, you got this, or I believe in you, yeah. and um, so that's where she came from, and I did, I think, one comic uh, or two with her. And then um, I don't remember why, but um, I was drawing a Granny Bear comic. Uh, I started, I do Granny Bear kind of as a supporting character in another comic. And I was like, I really like this bear character. And so I wanted to do another one with her. And then I just felt like she needed to, um, to have someone with her, like a best friend. And that I got the idea to bring in the Lady Boop character because I still really liked her, but I didn't have a place where she fit. So mm -hmm. um, once I drew them together, it was just, it was perfect. And so I love doing their little, um, their little adventures together. I have um, a series where it's uh, uh, cooking with Coco and with Momo and Coco. And so I have them trying to do their, like a YouTube show, but um, they kind of fail more than they succeed. And then I have Granny Bear and um, Boop kind of reacting to the stream in their home. And so that one was a lot of fun. I really love doing those. And uh, they kind of are the caretakers for the rest of the, uh, of the crew. Um, That's adorable. They're so. all support together. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, there is a question from Aaron Campbell. Uh, this is advice because uh, he's saying my wife is an artist, has a bachelor in studio art, um, but is trying to build a portfolio for possible income. Any tips on that? Also, she's doing digital illustration now. So trying to build a portfolio and make income as a digital artist. Do you have any advice? Um, I would definitely if you're if you're looking to do the portfolio and do digital work, I would definitely focus on the things that you want to do. So like, for example, if you want to do children's book illustration, um, do your own project, do something where you can show those skills because people are going to hire you for what they can see. And um, if you really want to do something, but you don't have a lot of examples, but you still want to get some work, you put all this other stuff out there, um, you'll get hired for this other stuff that you not necessarily will want to do. Your heart will not be in it. So therefore, at least in my experience, that's not the best work that I've ever put out. Um, so in, in art, um, I'm sure she knows is a, a very long um, labor intense field. If you don't have that passion there, if you don't have that love for whatever you're doing, whether it's design, animation, illustration, um, comics, if you don't have that love there, it's going to be harder to stay on task, to get those things done, to, um, to really, you know, find joy in it because you don't want to be doing something that you hate. So definitely when you're looking to do that portfolio, fill it with things you love, fill it with what you want to be hired for and, um, 
I mean, if you're, if there's a way that you can, um, you know, do some non for profit work, if it, you know, that whole thing is a big, you know, ball of wax on its own when you're, when you're doing work for free, but, um, make your own projects if you don't want to dive into that and, you know, set off schedule time, make time to do it, make time to grow those elements. And um, then you'll have a portfolio that you're proud of, that you want to tell people about, that you want to shout from the mountaintop and that will get people's attention. Um, And I think it helps to be focused too, because if you, if you, you know, give them everything in the kitchen sink, they won't know what to pick. They'll have, they'll have almost kind of like, um, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's when you're presented with too many choices, you can't make a decision. So yeah, you don't. decision paralysis. Yes, really. exactly. Yes, yes. And I had that actually in one of my booths. I had like all of these different T-shirt designs and I kept on hearing customers say that there's so many designs. I don't know what to pick. I'll just pick. I'll think about it and come back later. And they never did. Yeah. So you you got to focus it down. And I think, you know, it. you can focus on maybe one or two areas, but don't, you know, put everything out there. You know, I can do logos. I can do, you know, brochure design. I can make your children's book. I can do your website. That's too much. Just focus down on what you personally want to do, what brings you joy, what will, you know, get that, um, that best work coming out, you know, with your client work that will build on your portfolio. And I think that's a good way to go about it. Love it. Everything. Perfect. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yes. A plus. Good job. Speaking of which, can we get a little synopsis on what we created here today? Cause we're almost to an end here and uh, we've loved watching you work, Christy. Thank you so much for letting us be a part of this, this whole panel. Yeah, thank you so much for um, having me on today. So um, what I did was I got, I actually got through one frame. I'm very happy um, (laughs) through uh, inking and coloring. So um, my process is I start out with a very rough sketch like this, and then I do line art, and then I do color. When I'm doing this all at once, I'll batch. I'll do all the line art at once, and then I'll go through and do all the color at once. But I wanted you guys to see um, every little bit of that process. So I went in here, and this um, right here is my um, my rough sketch for that panel. And then I started with the line art here, and then um, I went into the color, and then I'm starting on the line art here for this one. But as far as uh, the process goes, I am heavy on grouping. I group characters. I group uh, foreground and background elements. And let me pop in here and show those again. Um, Another trick I do is I have my comic frame separate and on top of everything. So when I um, come out of my isolation mode, it automatically cleans up my edges and has a nice clean frame there. So um, that also saves time um, because like you can see here, I'm not as precise on these background element fills, but it doesn't matter because I've got the frame on top of there. It's going to clean up those edges. So I don't have to spend that extra time to clean that up and fix that. Um, But as far as grouping goes, like I have this, uh, this farmer stand right here that's grouped. I've got my characters grouped. And this allows me to drag these elements around and move them. Um, If I, if I feel the layout isn't quite right, um, I can switch that up and move it without having to redraw stuff. I did this background element all in one. And um, so that's how I keep control. And that's, that's my layering system that without layers in Illustrator and how I keep track of everything I'm doing and all this, um, all these elements. And um, this also helps like when I have frames that are um, action oriented where, you know, characters are basically in the same position and environment, I can just copy over this entire frame and just change the characters, um, Mm -hmm. uh, their poses just a little bit, all it needs. And that speeds up the comic process as well. Um, That's something that I brought over from doing the keyboard and mouse because I was looking for every nook and cranny where I could save time. So um, I I would draw like one or two frames and say, okay, how much can I push this frame in the story and not have to redraw all these elements? And um, so um, that was great tips. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It was the process there through uh, 
much trial and error, but um, I'll be going through this in the same way um, I have in this frame. My characters are meeting another one and they decide to go out and have tea and um, kind of create this nice memory together. And that's the whole point of this comic is to um, remind you to recognize those little moments and take advantage of them and turn those into great memories because you never know. Um, yeah. tomorrow is not a guarantee. So you got to take advantage. <laughs> yes, exactly. I love but. this story. I love your creations. Watching it has been an honor. Thank you so oh, much for being so here, much. Christy. Uh, just you. to remind you guys, I want you to join Alex Lazarus after this as he breaks down essential steps for you to build a brand. You can start with your uh, your branding process with mood boards and strategy. And then immediately following that boot camp, stick around for another week of power prompts with Cody Bear. This week's prompt is yummy treats for doggists. So yet another adorable thing on your docket. So we got yes. cats. We got dogs. We got Christy. We got Anna. Say and see you later. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Oh, so I love that. That's wonderful. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you around you. the Adobe Live. Bye. See you later. <laughs>